Hey guys, my name is and this is Cobra. Welcome to the series where I teach you how to build a Discord or Pirate for your server. Today, we are uh, uh, doing an introduction to cogs and how they work and stuff. So let's get into it. First, we need to create... I'm just going to close this entire data directory because it's annoying me. Um, all these directories can go away and we need to create a brand new folder. Um, we're going to create a folder called cogs. And this cog is going to have a file called fun.py. We're going to create some some just uh, fun casual commands in this just to show you how, well the commands are going to be in the next video but we're going to show you um, how to, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to, how, to, how to do this basically, how just to make it work. So uh, from discord.ext.commands import cog, that is our cog, and then we need a class, uh, we call it fun and it inherits from cog and we need our oops init uh, function which takes self and it also takes bot um, for easier referencing so self dot um, fantastic um, and then in our uh, in our cog we can actually have uh, something called listeners so if you have uh, cog Dot listener and it is it is cog dot listener not, not self dot listener and we can use this to listen to, uh, for events so say async def on ready uh, so we can get oh my god <laughs> I should really have um, set a standard out channel I'm probably gonna do that uh, self dot standard out equals I might have done that in the notes I don't bloody remember to be honest um do that get rid of that uh, i'm gonna move all this i have uh, self dot standard out dot send instead because that's just gonna make things a lot easier so we've also done that we've done that here so we need to modify this um this is probably something i should have done originally but oh well and then here as well um, so for now we're just going to be like that. I'm going to change what channel that goes to though later as well. Um, but for now we're just going to do that. So we could do self dot bot dot send out equal uh, not equals um, dot send sorry oops outside the function um, uh, dot send. No, we don't need to send anything there. We can do if we want. So we can do like fun cog ready. Um, but we really don't need to do it, we just kind of need to print um, whoops fun cog ready um, and that's so we're actually going to get rid of that but that's how you would uh, reference stuff outside of that um, and that is more or less it for, for stuff we can add other stuff as well uh, however we just need to make a setup now um, that we'll, uh, well we will be adding more stuff to the uh, to the actual cog label, we're not going to do it now. Um, <clears throat> so we need to do bots in our setup. We need to do bot add cog uh, fun. Whoops, bot. There we go. <laughs> it's getting confused. Um, we can also use this to schedule tasks for the. Uh, the scheduler, so we can do like uh, bot dot scheduler dot add job, and then we can just add whatever job we want. Um, we're not going to do that now, no, because we don't have anything anything to schedule. But there we go. Um, so this is a basic cog. This is a very very basic cog. But now we actually need to add our cog to the bot. We actually need to call the thing, um, and there are multiple ways of doing this. The way I'm going to show you how to do this is arguably the quote-unquote best way of doing it. Um, so we're going to from glob import glob. Um, it's a weird library I don't really I don't exactly know what its purpose is but it's really useful for this. Uh, so we can have our cogs and then we're going to set it as a list. Um, <clears throat> And we're going to use some list comprehension here. So we're going to say path.split. Uh, it's, it's a double backslash. 
I'll explain what I'm doing after I've written this out uh, for path in glob. Um, it should be dot slash lib slash cogs. I think it's just that. Oh no. Uh, cogs slash startup by. So basically, what uh, that is doing is it's going through our cogs directory. So it's going to go through this entire directory and return the name of any cog that um well of any of any python file in there so it will return for, so for fun it will return fun uh so cogs and the moment would be fun if we had another cog that would be added in there as well so that's uh just kind of what this all, all this splicing is doing um no, that on its own is not useful. We need to go down here. We actually need to create a setup. Uh, we don't and absolutely need to, but I just like to have it as a separate function. Um, so for cog, for cog in cogs, um, we do self dot load extension. Yes, uh, f string. And we need to do blah, lib. Uh, dot cogs. Dot, I wonder if you can do relative imports here. I've never done relative imports in one of these. It should work. Maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Um, regardless, that'll work. You can experiment with um, relative imports if you want. Uh, and then we can print, uh, say, the cog uh, oh I've changed my cursor now. cog loaded incidentally if you do ever change your cursor to this you accidentally hit insert in sublime <laughs> uh, and then we just got to print the, the setup it's complete uh, we're also going to change our run down here so print running so you don't need to do all these prints um, I just like having the output when the bot launches plus it makes it easier to kind of visually see what the bot is doing when it launches. Um, I think that's about what we need to do. That should kind of just work. So we are actually going to quickly go back in here and self.bot.standardout.send um, fun cog ready just to, to show that it is indeed working. That needs to be five. This is episode nine, right? <laughs> Why do I never remember these things? Yes, it's episode 9. So that needs to be... I need to keep remembering to do that. Um, I don't know why I've done versions. Oh, that's a big error. God. Um, receive function instead. You received a function instead. <laughs> Lib.cogs.fun lib uh, Cog listener expected string but received function instead. Cog.listener. Oh, this is the on already. That's broken. It has a. Uh, it has parentheses, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> Sorry, it has parentheses. <laughs> oh god, this, this is the only problem we, uh, when you do it live. So as you can see, our fun cog has been loaded. Um, we never awaited the send, did we? No, we didn't. Fantastic. Incidentally, if you ever do get a, I can't remember the exact errors, but if if you get if you get an error that talks about uh, trace malloc, you've forgotten to await something. Um, so we go here, now online, fun cog ready. So as you can see, our fun cog has been loaded successfully and it's ready to use. It doesn't do anything at the moment, uh, but it is ready to use. Incidentally, we can do other things in here. So we can do say, cog .listener async def on message or um, async def def on welcome which is uh, something that we're going to be taking advantage on, of later when we're talking about welcoming members um, <clears throat> gonna leave gonna take that away again I'm also gonna take that away again and we're just gonna hit pass uh, there was one more thing I was gonna show which is is technically optional um, but it might be useful for you. So in our onready we have if not self.ready 
Um, now this only checks if the bot is ready, not if the cogs are. Because uh, the bot is always run first, because you can see if we run the launcher again, we'll see when the bot gets loaded, the bots, uh, there we go, the bot, oh, that should print that the cogs are ready. I saw we did the thing, right? Oh no, because we never did it here. We actually do need to do it here. Um, no fun cog ready. <laughs> um, we probably need to, yeah, we need to do, just for f fancy sakes, uh, just put a space there and there. Um, we actually don't need this on connect really, but it's just useful to have. Uh, so this should, this should demonstrate my point. Uh, okay, well, it's not, unfortunately, it's not demonstrating it very well. Essentially, um, what I'm, what I'm trying to, is because it's sending a message. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the, the bots on ready is always called first. So the bot methods are always called first. And then these are called later. Uh, all the calls are called later, specifically in the order in which they're loaded, which will be in alphabetical order the way we're doing it. Um, so if, if we don't send this message, for example, I just kind of want to show this. Um, yeah, there we go. So uh, bot ready and then fun cog ready. Um, so as a result, this on self.ready, if a cog takes a while to load, the bot will actually... Uh, say it's ready. I don't know why that's at the top. <laughs> that shouldn't be at the top at all. Um, <clears throat> when the rest of the bot actually isn't. Um, so what we can do is we can create something that um, is better uh, that does this better. That actually tracks all the cogs as well. Um, so we can create a uh, the way that I've done, I'm not sure if this is the absolute best way of doing it, um, but I've created a class essentially called ready um, that takes just a random object. Uh, def in itself, oops, uh, and we need to say which, um, uh, we need to be able to track which. Uh, cogs already which aren't so for cog in cogs uh, set atra so this just uh, sets um, uh, so for cog in cogs it basically says this is essentially equivalent to going through all the cons say self dot cog equals false so self dot fun equals false self dot gate where we're gonna have later false self experience this just uh, does it all in one go based on list which is kind of nice um, and then we have our def ready up. You can probably turn this into a property somehow, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm not not sure because you actually need it to be a function call. Uh, self cog true. Uh, the advantage of this is that uh, this argument here can just be a string and it will just work, uh, which is fantastic. Um, and we can also have our have our cog print statement here as well, so we can say uh, cog cog ready saves us having to put it in the other one um, and then def is uh, def we're going to have already um, self <clears throat> and then return all uh, so this all function uh, you pass an iterable uh, an iterable yeah it is an iterable through it and if all of the results are true then it works so if what we need to do is get at self cog. Uh, so this is either going to be true or false. So if all of these are true, um, then it will work. So, and then we come down here, uh, just kind of reminding myself how I've actually done this, because there you go. So we can have a while loop in here. So while uh, not, oh, we actually need to create the thing first. Did we do that in the unit? We do. Um, it's only self.ready, we're also going to create self. Dot, um, I don't know. Well, if, if, uh, we could probably just sign it to ready, to be honest. 
uh, uh, maybe not. The uh, self dot cogged ready equals ready. Um, so now we have our object there. Well, not. Um, Where's the run? There it is. Uh, self dot cogs ready dot all ready. Await sleep. We're going to import that in a second. Uh, not 5, 0 0.5. Uh, 0 0.5 is a decent amount of time, I would say, to wait. Um, it's not too much, it's not too little. Um, and then it's essentially the bot. Waits. So if you uh, you could have some sort of logic to say uh, self dot ready equals true, and then just call self dot bot dot ready instead of calling everything again. Um, and then if you had some logic where if you absolutely needed the bot to wait until absolutely everything was ready in everywhere, then you could use this um, to say a cog takes forever to load. You could use this. Um, this is a new system that I've kind of built, which is why it's probably not the best in the world. Um, but it does work at the very least, so that's all I kind of care about for now. So if you come back to our cog for a second, um, we could say uh, if not self dot bot dot ready. So again, that's where our self dot bot already comes in. Um, self dot bot dot cogs ready dot ready up, um, and then we pass the name of the cog, which is fun. Uh, it's the name of the file, not this bit here. So essentially this uh, function tells the bot that the cog is ready to go. Uh, so if you run that now, uh, there's not really a way of showing it as such. <laughs> uh, but bot ready, oh yeah, I, did, I never defined sleep did I? Um, but now bot ready will always, always, always be printed last. Uh, so if you come up here from asyncio import sleep watch it again connected phone call ready and bot call ready uh bot ready so uh, the most you're gonna have you might have like a uh, a half did it not send anything it might not have sent anything i don't know um either that was why you why did it not send anything i feel as though it should have still sent something right or did I accidentally get rid of Oh no, I got rid of that completely. Um, that'll be why. Oops. I didn't mean to hit Ctrl Z, I meant to hit Ctrl X. Uh, so come down here. Send the message saying the bot is now online. And then we'll just, we'll just make it work absolutely fully. There we go. So you can see in the little preview that it's worked. And then the bot has also waited for all the cogs to be ready. Um, and all that jazz just works fine. So that is essentially an, an auto-ready system. We don't need to worry about that at all anymore. We don't need to worry about importing cogs or anything. The bot will just do it for us when it starts up now. So it's a it's a, a, it's a semi-complicated thing to get going, but I would say it was worth it, um, especially in the case that you absolutely need to wait uh, for the bot to be online. Uh, but yeah, that is how to schedule stuff. Is it? Is it how to... I'm actually losing track of what episodes I've been doing. That was an interesting. That was an interesting the cogs. <laughs> oh my god, I am going crazy with all this code. Uh, that was an introduction of the cogs. We did scheduling last time. Uh, if you like the video, then say hello down below. Uh, and if you have any questions, leave them down below as well. Or you can ask them in Discord should you so wish. If you really like the video, consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss out on any future ones. And if you really, really like the video, then consider supporting me on Patreon. Because it would be a really cool thing to do, but of course you do not have to do it. Um, next time we're going to do an introduction to commands and maybe I'll actually I'll talk about what I want to bloody talk about. Um, so yeah, I'll see you then.